Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here with Dyer Supplier to have a little fun and use a more unique method of applying our color to yarn, ice dyeing. Today we are going to cover our bare yarn with some ice, sprinkle on some dye powder, and then let the melting pattern of the ice define the pattern that we end up with on our yarn. It is so much fun, and we gotta take a little trip outside where it is hot and sunny. Today we are gonna dye 100 grams of the Dyer Supplier Superwash MCN sock yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 15% nylon, and 10% cashmere. It is really, really soft and takes up color beautifully. We are gonna pre-soak this yarn in eight cups of tap water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, this way the acid will already be in our yarn, so that way when the color is melts um, its way onto the yarn, we can uh, have the acid there to set the color. Let the yarn pre-soak for 20 to 30 minutes. We are outside on a super duper hot day, and I've got here just a kitty litter tray that I picked up at the dollar store. I squeezed out as much of the water as I could from our pre-soaked yarn. And now we are gonna want to spread it out as much as we possibly can here in the pan because we want to be able to get as much color coverage on as much of the yarn as possible. Uh, colors tend to strike to superwash yarns pretty quickly. So that's one of the reasons for spreading it out um, in here in advance. And now let's go get our ice. We have a large tub of ice to start layering our frozen water on the yarn. I layered on a bunch of ice cubes on top, trying to keep as much of the yarn covered as possible while also keeping the layer of ice fairly even. Today we are going to use three colors of Jacquard Acid dyes, navy blue, turquoise, and periwinkle. I have placed just a tiny amount of dye here in a cup, enough that I can grab some of the powder and start layering it onto our ice. Uh, I might decide that I want to go get more, but in general, with powders, a little bit less is more. And I think with this small amount of powder, we could get something watercolory. We might also get some speckles if some of the dye hits the yarn directly instead of just sort of going on top of the ice. But, oof, look at that breaking in the periwinkle. You can see these rivers of blue and red there that are just gorgeous. I am not washing my hands at all in between the colors. And now we're doing the navy. Um, and you can see that this one is spreading out a bit more because our colors have started, or our ice is already starting to melt. It is a very, very hot day here in Metro West Massachusetts. And I'm going to layer these colors on top of each other a little bit. At this point, I can tap with the cup in addition to bringing it out. Ooh, this isn't a ton of color, but I'm sort of oop, digging what is happening here. Okay, and back to our periwinkle. And you can see that that color has already slid off of the ice really, really quickly. Or sliding down that surface onto our yarn. We are not going to get complete color coverage on this yarn. There is going to be a lot of white left behind. But I wanted to do this with a bit of restraint. Um, and you could keep adding more dye on. It's really up to you because it's your yarn. But ultimately, um, the way that these colors form on the yarn is going to be by how the ice cubes are laid and how the dye is going to slide and melt off of that ice. And I'm really excited to see how it turns out. It will 
probably take around three hours for all of the ice to melt. And once all of the ice has melted and uh, the dye is on the yarn, we are gonna go ahead and steam set it. It is hot outside and there's a lot of heat in the sun, but if we were to leave this in the sun, all the water would eventually evaporate um, since it's not enclosed. And so that's why we will go steam set it. Some of the patterns of the dye melting the ice are absolutely extraordinary. About two and a half hours later and all of this ice has melted. And I see like a hint of some of this turquoise color in the yarn. And it looks like there's definitely probably some powder around the edges. And there's breaking around with the periwinkle, but let's take a look and flip it over. You can see that that color coverage that we got is predominantly on the one side. What I'm gonna do, using my glove and these hands, is I am sort of wiping this little color off of those edges and capturing it on our yarn. Um, and I'm just gonna let this soak probably, goodness, for another maybe 20 minutes or so to absorb that little bit of extra color. But most of the color is in fact in our yarn. 20 minutes later and the water is now warm. There's still that hint of color in there. We could go ahead and steam set it now, but what I'm gonna do instead is add one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar um, and sort of move it around because I want, do want to try to absorb that last little bit of color and add those low levels of blue onto our yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit for 20 more minutes, see if we absorb most of that remaining color, and then we will go steam set the yarn. Because don't forget, when we pre-soaked this yarn, we only had a little bit of vinegar in there. And so most of this liquid here is from the ice cubes, which had no additional acid. 20 minutes later, that yarn is looking nice and clear to me. Um, we've clearly picked up a lot of that pastel color around this yarn, which I love. It gives it this icy blue backdrop, which is really cool. All right, let's go ahead and steam set the yarn. I placed the yarn inside a steamer basket on my stovetop, and we are going to steam it for 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes, so we can now turn off the heat, remove the lid, and let our yarn cool completely so we can wash it. Let's wash our ice dyed yarn. Mm, this is just some plain tap water. And we are rinsing it to check for color bleeding, which I'm not expecting because we did add additional vinegar into here and heat set the yarn. So we are gonna wash it with a tiny bit of some clear crystal, just a little bit on my hands. Um, and again, this is another check I like to do for color bleeding. If you do see some color bleeding, then you can stop, add a ton of vinegar into your soap, and frequently that'll help, and you can always steam set it at an additional time. Um, but, it looks like our color is in the yarn and we're not seeing any bleeding. So I'm gonna rinse out the soap and leave this up to dry. Here is the finished ice dyed yarn. The dyer supplier MCN base is covered with these speckles and splotches of color on a very pastel icy blue backdrop. The colors mostly struck where they hit, but some of the color did sort of go around the yarn overall. And I'm really glad that we were able to capture that on this yarn. We mostly kept the colors each in their own section, but you could do some more contrasting colors and play more with the way that the dyes will overlap as they melt and hit the yarn. Definitely being able to spread out your fiber as much as possible is extremely helpful with this technique. 
How fun is this yarn? I love techniques where you don't know exactly how it's going to turn out because something out of your control, like melting, really defines the placement of the colors. There are some fun variations you could do on this technique. You could create a knit blank, a piece of fabric that you intend to unravel in the end using like a children's hand crank knitting machine. And then try this technique and see the beautiful patterns that you can create from dye melting on ice. In this video, I absorbed all of the dye to leave no dye behind, but you definitely don't have to do that. If you want more white versus the pastel icy blue that I captured, uh, raise the yarn up. Have it in a little bit of a basket or maybe on like a cookie cooling rack so that way the water will drip through and really only where the dye first hits the yarn is where it'll strike. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you would like to see more of my yarn dyeing adventures, you can find me on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. You'll find a link in the video description. And for your yarn dyeing needs, head over to dyersupplier.com. They have so many ethically sourced bare yarn bases, and they're releasing new bases all the time. Um, it's a perfect canvas, and the prices are fantastic. Also, you can find all 40 Jacquard Acid dye colors. So really, it's a one-stop shop to get everything you need to create some beautiful, beautiful yarn. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.